Welcome to July Said News. My name is Rob. And today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to take a look at a little difference between Cardano and Solana and which one could potentially win out. And before we get into that, of course, today it is uh, February 1st, 2023. And the FOMC meeting came out. Jerome Powell raised interest rates by a quarter basis point, which is no surprise to anyone. And uh, because of that, uh, the market is going crazy. I'm just kidding. It's not doing anything. We've got a little bit of a dip in the in the Dow Jones. We've got a little bit of dip in S and P 500 and Nasdaq. But uh, today for crypto, it's a whopping. Uh, well, actually, it's down 0.8 percent, but Bitcoin's up 0.2 percent in, in the last hour. So, no big deal. I, it's quite boring actually. Let's just get into some things that we can talk about and take action on, and that is Cardano versus Solana. And this has uh, been a big area of contention for a lot of people because we're taking a look at the layer one solutions, which one's the best one, which can do it. And um, in all honesty, I mean, they're probably both going to do pretty well. And of course, some people will say, well, this one's going to be the ultimate winner. This one's going to be the ultimate winner. No one's going to know for quite some time. And there was an article that caught my attention from uh, the Motley Fool and it talks about better buy Cardano versus Solana. And these are the types of articles that you have to be really careful on and really dig deep into because sometimes it's not all right. So let's just break into it. So here's the key points. Solana can offer transaction speed and cost advantages in many scenarios. That part is very true. We're going to go over that. But investors shouldn't overlook other characteristics and market shaping events that may tilt things in Cardano's favor. What are they talking about? They're talking about security and dependability. So it, start, it starts off as Cardano's token is trading uh, roughly 87% from its peak or it's down uh, 87%. Solana is down 90% from its high. True and true. Adoption and utilization of Cardano's and Solana's respective networks will likely be a driving force in shaping each crypto's performance. True and true. Thus far, Cardano's Ouroboros proof of stake system has proven to be highly secure. And that is very true. Uh, there's been no downtime. There's been a little bit of a, a lag, I think, one time in the last, like, I don't know, two years or three years, whatever it is, but it just goes off without a hitch. Due to its network structure and heavy emphasis on security, building and running applications on Cardano will typically be slower compared to Solana, which uses a proof of history system. This is debatable. If you're looking at the UTXO system, it's all about how much you can actually jam in there. And that's just pretty much how it goes. So there's a big difference between transactions per second and throughput and, and, uh, and history. Uh, versus the UTXO model. And uh, there's a video that uh, lays it out pretty specifically uh, from what it is. Cardano does offer relatively low transaction costs, but transaction costs on the Solana network will usually be even cheaper. And we'll take a look at all this data in a bit. Multiple products on Solana have also suffered significant uh, security breaches and the network has seen outage periods when it is rendered inaccessible. Before we get into that second part, I mean, the, the first part we'll talk about. Multiple products on Solana have also suffered significantly security breaches. Here's the thing. I love Cardano. I'm a big Cardano believer. We have a stake pool. It's called DNews. There's a link in the description. You can stake with us right now. I don't know why you have it on uh, any exchange. That makes no sense to me. But to be crystal clear, we have to differentiate between what is the fact and what is a little bit of a fiction. So first of all, the things that they talk about right here where Solana's, you know, it's been down so much and uh, there's been some security hacks, which is true. But those are the things that are built on top of Solana. Just like when people were giving guff to Sunday Swap and they were, they were saying, oh, this is just because Cardano sucks. It wasn't an issue with Cardano. There was an issue with concurrency in the way that it was built. They worked with IOHK and they made it a better product. But people will say, well, just because this thing is built on this layer one solution, then the whole layer one solution is wrong. That's not what it is. So if, if you go out there and you build something on Solana, and again, not like I'm the biggest Solana bull out there, but you have to be careful what you say. So if you go out there and you build something on Solana and you have a data breach because you messed up, that's on you. That is not on the layer one solution. So I just want to make that crystal clear before we move on. Then, or thus, so... On top of that, offering quick and inexpensive transactions is a desirable characteristic for a layer one blockchain. That's very true. But security and reliability are paramount. CEO Sam Bankman fried has cast a shadow over Solana. True. Some have alleged that Bankman fried and his companies have 
moves to artificially increase the price of the Solana token, potentially, who knows. Much of Solana's previous activity growth has been a result of it gaining favor as a go-to network for NFT projects. NFTs having fallen out of favor, network activity has slumped, and I don't see the NFT market recovering anytime in the near future. I think that is totally false. NFTs are gonna, are gonna differentiate everything and they're a huge game changer. We just did an article yesterday about how Polygon is partnering up with an AI platform. They're gonna be using a, an avatar, which is gonna be placed right in the Polygon uh, network where you're gonna be able to actually interface with this AI avatar asking any questions in an NFT manner. So on top of that, we've taken a look at different NFTs as far as like digital IDs, then also the things they can do to eliminate the middleman for uh, real estate, for DMV in California using pesos, and just a whole host of other things as far as utility. So I think NFTs are gonna be uh, the mainstay, but that's not what the article states. And they could be right as far as time frame, but I think they will bounce back at some point. And this is to sum it up, Cardano looks to be the better buy. Cardano's security advantage, advantages are the main reason I expect it to be the better performer. I think that Cardano's ADA token looks like the clear cut better buy at today's prices. I'm not so sure. And if you take a look at today's prices, I mean, Solana is down 90%, around $23, $24. It used to be $212, just so you know. So it could 10X back to its original price. Not to say that it will. It's not financial advice, not your dad. So don't go out and buy a bunch of Solana token just because I said some crazy offshot uh, sentence. But then with Cardano, I mean, now we're looking at, I think, 38 cents, somewhere around there. And of course, it was around $3. So probably about an 8x from there. So I'm not so sure that is what it is. But there are some other things to talk about to really break it down as far as like the cheapness of the transactions and what's going on. So we can take a look here. This is from statista.com. And what it's telling you is the average transaction price in Cardano. And we're gonna see right here that the transaction fee in ADA, this is in January, 2021. It's usually around 0.2 per ADA. So obviously one ADA is one ADA. That doesn't change. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, that doesn't change. But the price in dollars, that does change. So the transaction fee in ADA on January 2021 was roughly around six cents. But when we hit its all time high, now it became 50 cents because that was 20 cents, roughly around two or $3 or whatever it was. And of course, right now it's at 0.18 and that's in, that's in 2023. So we're a little bit off right now. It doesn't, doesn't, go, doesn't go that far. So we're looking at a little bit uh, less, but it is still 0 0.20 of Cardano. Now we take a look at Solana the average transaction fee, and I link these all in the description so you can check it out yourself. The average transaction fee paid by Solana's users in the last epic was 0 0.00014605 Solana. And that's across the board. So as far as like what it said is, as far as average transaction fees being lower, they are right. It is going to be lower and that is true. But there's another thing, and people always talk about the volume. Well, what's the volume? What's going on with the volume of Cardano and, and the things that are happening? So this is from Masari, and this is an actual chart which talks about trading volume. It is well known that many exchanges conduct wash trading practices in order to inflate trading volume. They are incentivized to report inflated volumes in order to attract traders. The real volume refers to the total volume on chain or what is being done. So right here, you can see that as far as Cardano, we're looking at roughly around 100 million, January 29th, 2023. So as far as like things going back and forth, that's just the volume on exchanges. Solana, a little bit higher actually. It's roughly at around 300 million or so. So roughly a 3X. Also on top of that, when it talked about reliability and I was harping on, you know, if you build something on there, there is something to be said about the reliability of the network itself. So this is from Solana Beach. This is a direct API integration to what is going on to, into the blockchain that is Solana. There's a lot of failed transactions. I don't know if it just, it says we're, we're having catching up with the Solana blockchain. And then I refreshed it and it's still a bunch of failed transactions. I don't know what is going on with that. But then I dug a little bit deeper, take a look at it. This is the uptime for Solana itself in the main net. And you need to see here that February, I mean, it's February, I mean, come on, it's February 1st. So no, no downtime. The last two months, no downtime. But if we go back November, 
three months, hundred percent in October, it was down, you know, 0 0.86, 0.86. Okay. And then September, a little bit downtime, but it's still around 99 point something percent. August, July, J June was up except for, you know, a half a point here. And again, May 99. So you can see that along the way, January is probably the worst one, 96.43%. Well, whatever was going on, probably an upgrade of the main net. But you can just see that it's up quite a bit of time. I don't even need to show you uh, Cardano because it's up 100%. I mean, if you're looking for perfection, that's it. And then also, if you're looking for staking, Cardano made, in my personal opinion, the easiest way to stake your crypto and the most successful way. And also, uh, you don't have any slashing uh, rewards. You don't have anything as far as like a lockup period. You put it in. When you want to take it out, you take it out. And that's pretty much it. So on that one, the Cardano is, I think, a clear winner. But then there's some other things, which is who holds what? Because talk people talk a lot about the VCs, ah, the VCs of Solana and things like that, which I got you. I get you. It is one of those things, right? And what everybody's harping about is this. This is from Asari well, as well. Initial token allocations for public blockchain. This is a little bit old, but it is the truth. And if we can take a look here, I mean, you got Ethereum, Binance, Polkadot, Cardano, and Solana. And the thing you want to notice is that 48% is insiders. All the team, the company, and VC purchase tokens. Roughly 50% which is a boatload, I might add. Now, if you take a look at Cardano, this is in the blue, this is all public sale. So when people talk about VCs, this is what they're always referring to. However, if you take a look at the top Solana distribution from mainnet, again, this is uh, the link in the description for CoinCarp. You can see all the different wallets that we have out here. The top 10 holders own 10% of Solana. Top 20, 15%. Top 50, 26. And the top 100 holders own a third of all the Solana out there. That is, if you, the way I said it, it's, uh, it is a quite a bit. And you can just see right here and it breaks it all down, the top 100 richest Solana addresses. And how does that compare to say Cardano? Well, actually pretty good. I mean, if you take a look at mainnet here, the holders, top 10, 6% are in the top 10. Top 20 is 8%. Top 50 and top 100 is 19%. And of course they break it down, down here to those percentages. So, you're looking at half, 18, 36, roughly, compared to Solana. But there's also one more I would like to throw in there, and that is Polygon. We did a, a video yesterday about Polygon, the different things that they're doing. We already talked about the AI thing and the uh, partnerships with Disney, with Starbucks, uh, and with Nike. And there is a concern here, which is I didn't bring it up, uh, but as far as like a rich list, as far as the uh, uh, wallets, you can just see here, Polygon holder statistics. Top 10 holders, 67%. Top 20, 74, top 50, top 100, 85%. That's on the Ethereum network. If you take, take a look just at Polygon itself, top 100 holders, 93%. Top 10, 93%. That is a boatload of people. And if you're talking, if you're worried about centralization, well, there it is. However, if you break it down even more so, Ethereum, you can just see here that the, this is the uh, staking contract. That's where 38% is, just so you know. And then the Plasma Bridge, that's 8%. Then under here, the Polygon ecosystem growth, 4%, and so on, and the contract. So it breaks it all down, but still, it's a little bit more than what it is. And then if we further take a look at it, we take a look at the tokenomics. This is from CoinGecko. If you go to CoinGecko for any different crypto, you can find now the tokenomics, which is very nice. You can see where the allocation is. Solana, again, like I said, the seed sale was 25%. That's a lot in the seed sale. That usually goes to some VCs, like we talked about. The founding sale, 20%. That's where they get that, essentially, uh, that number of the VCs, 48% or so from where it is. And then you have breaks down, like the validator, strategic sale, public auction. The team has 20%. It's a lot. Foundation, 20%. I guess maybe those are staking rewards. And then here's the supply schedule. And what's important to notice about the supply schedule is are all the tokens already out? Because if you're waiting for, for the big dump, I mean, in all honesty, that pretty much already happened November 22nd. Actually, the cliff was December 20th when everything got released. That's when there was a lot of dumping. And now we just see here that everything's pretty much flatline and base, except for the staking rewards, which go up. And right now, if we take a look at the overview, actually, no, we don't need that. The circulating supply is 372 million. Total supply is 539. So there's a lot more to come out. 
but it looks like it's going to happen over the next 10 years. So just be aware of that. And then if we take a look then at Cardano, same thing. How did Cardano do? Well, the ICO, which is just regular people, that's a lot, 87%. And that's good. There wasn't a lot of VCs, just an ICO, initial coin offering. The team gets around 11%, staking rewards, 40%. Awesome. And then we can take a look here. The cliff is already done in 20, 2017. That's why you don't see too much massive volatility, just mostly for the staking rewards. And again, you've got a total supply, a max supply. The circulating supply is 35 billion, which means there's only 10 billion pretty much locked up. But that happens over the next, <laughs> until 2050. So not too bad. And then lastly, Polygon, They've got 10 billion for a total and max supply. They've got 9 billion sticking out there. Ecosystem is 23. Eh. Staking rewards, okay, 12. Foundation, that's a lot. 21% for the foundation. What are they doing with that? Advisors, team, 16%. Okay. Private investors, 4%. Binance launch. Wow. Binance launch. But well, that that goes to everybody, 19%. And then this uh, looks more choppy as far as the supply schedule of what's being distributed. So you got 10, or excuse me, 1 billion over the next mm, only two years, 2025, because we're in 2023. And that's it in a nutshell. So I wanted to throw in Polygon just to talk about it. But in all honesty, for me, I don't own a lot of Solana. I mean, I know people talk about the technology and the throughput, but I'm just going to, I'm not even going to start dollar cost averaging. I know people say how great it is, but for me, I just, just something about it I'm just not keen on and that's me but I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention just to give everybody the full story because there's gonna be articles like that where you're like oh you know Solana looks awful it doesn't look awful it's just that is the truth we'll just take a look at I mean as far as like everything we just saw so I want you to bring that to your attention so you can make the best decision I've made my decision moving forward and that's it so look if you like today's video give it a thumbs up also consider subscribing I think we talk about are very time sensitive, but that's it for today. So I do appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much, and I'll see you on the next one.